Joining us now from Washington is Sebastian Shemarani, the son of Kate Shemarani, who's recently started speaking out against conspiracy theorists. Sebastian, thank you so much, really, for being with us. First, if you can, Thanks just take us me. back quickly uh, to when you actually decided to go public with your own you know, point of view to try and stop people like your mother uh, from spreading some pretty dangerous ideas. Sure. Early last summer, I was in London, uh, in London with a lot of my friends um, in a flat. University had been closed as a result of uh, all of the COVID containment measures. And I don't have much contact with my mom usually because the relationship is tested from her behavior and her beliefs. But one of my friends came to me and said, have you seen what's going on on the news? And the footage that you're showing now of these protests in Trafalgar Square, this is what I found out was going on in around about April or May time and that my mum was leading this. And I was even cycling around London um, once past Trafalgar Square and heard my mum on the megaphone doing one of these rallies. So at that point, I realized that this was way out of hand and I needed to use the relationship that I had with her to tell people the truth about this person and perhaps why she's motivated to convince other people of the ideas she believes in. Right, because it's gotten to the point now where, I mean, much-needed donations, you know, from some very wealthy people to develop vaccines, for example, uh, to help developing countries with vaccination programs, they're receiving threats, I mean, against their lives and sometimes their families. Um, and it, there's a risk here that they will actually be deterred from giving to good causes because, you know, what's the point of giving back if you're going to receive threats in return. Does that worry you about how far this could spread? Yes, it does. If you look at the way that my mom will describe the people that she sees as the um, ringleaders of this global conspiracy, like Bill Gates, for example, it is, this, it is with a lot of violence and a lot of hatred. So I wouldn't be surprised if some of my mom's supporters, at least, would be motivated to take matters into their own hands. It won't affect, I don't think, the people on the ground who are fighting this virus, like the nurses and the doctors we have in the UK, because these people are dedicated to their roles and under the radar enough. But for sure, the people at the top, um, I wouldn't be surprised if, if this goes much further and there are terrible things happen over the next six to 12 months as a result of what my mom is saying. Right. Does at least losing key social media tools, you know, like YouTube and Twitter, uh, does that help cripple your mother's cause, for example? Yes, it absolutely does. The argument that people will give that you can't um, stop free speech is, is just not true. You can switch off their social media and their platform will be massively decreased. My mum has luckily, at least for now, kind of dropped into irrelevance in the UK. Okay. Um, so, I mean, tell us, tell us a bit about the psychology that actually you feel knowing this so intimately. What drives sure. a psyche like that? What do they want? Do they genuinely believe in some of the, the madness that they're pitching? I would say that they definitely do believe in these things. There is a difference in the psychology of the leaders and the psychology of the followers. The followers tend to feel like they don't have an explanation for things that are going on in the world. They tend to be alienated from friends, family, perhaps their religious groups, whatever. But the leaders are different. The leaders also have, as in the case of my mom, um, if you like a messiah complex, they believe that they are conduits of the truth. And often that will have either religious or spiritual connotations. I, I grew up with my mom telling me that she could speak to spirits, that she was in contact with aliens, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and these things would recur maybe once or twice a year. She would discuss one of these episodes with me. So she believes that she and she alone um, is a special person within this movement. And that sets her up to believe that she deserves to have such a large audience. And there's no reasoning with a person like that. The only thing you can do is limit their platform because no one will ever convince my mum of the other side. Right. I mean, so this has been a lifelong struggle for you. This didn't just raise its head with COVID-19. Uh, can I ask no. you, has, has your mother ever been able to say, I told you so, I warned you this would happen, and one of her conspiracy theories came true? Not a single time, no. And the predictions that she makes get more and more extreme as the previous predictions have proved incorrect. So it started off with simple business schemes, if you like, um, that she was predicting and didn't come true. And now we're at the level of global coordinated genocide, which is not going to happen. Um, but in two to four years time, she will have an excuse for why um, the government decided to postpone the genocide. She will never um, think to herself that she was wrong. This and that's just, just it. You've never been work. able to say, I told you so because there's no rationale here, right? Exactly. There's always a reason for why 
the conspiracy plot is going to happen next year or the year after that. It's never we were wrong. It's just we're right, but not yet. Is there, I mean, and I know you're talking to a very complex group of people with complexes themselves, but is there anything you want to say to them to let them know that this doesn't just hurt them, it hurts so many of us when they follow and perpetuate uh, these kinds of theories? Well, the problem with that is that these people genuinely believe that what they are saying is helpful. So they would argue the exact opposite, which is that we're going to hurt people by believing what our government says. The one piece of advice I would say to anyone listening on either side of this argument is we don't know how to look at statistics, or at least the average person in the street doesn't. The average person doesn't understand the science behind vaccines, whatever. What we do understand intuitively is incentives. So you should ask yourself if someone says there's a conspiracy to kill people or there's a conspiracy to, I don't know, it, it, do something with Bill Gates's polio um, vaccination program, ask yourself why. Why would someone want to kill half a million people or, or eradicate half the UK's population. This doesn't make economic sense. It certainly doesn't make sense that if you're the global elite, you would kill off the people who work for you and make you richer. So if you ask yourself intuitively, why, why would someone want to do that? Often that's the easiest way to argue with a conspiracy and get someone who believes in it to think, oh, there's a plot hole in, in the story that I'm spinning here. Absolutely. Sebastian Shemarani, really, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us. We, we greatly appreciate it.